Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I would like to welcome everyone to my J Toolman Photo Printing Techie video channel. If you want to learn how to properly set up your printers for photo printing, if you'd like to learn how to properly set up your drivers for photo printing, if you would like to learn how to use the proper color managed workflow involving all of the aspects of it, then you are in the correct place. You have landed in the correct channel. Please consider, if you haven't already done so, subscribing to the channels and always remember to click on the bell so that you get a notification whenever I upload a new video. So let's get down to business. Let's start printing. Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here, and it is the 10th of November. Boy, the month is going by very quickly. Yesterday I got a question from a viewer, but before I start, I spoke with Precision Colors. Actually, he called me last evening. I was at a house visiting some friends, and I took the call anyway, because I figured it might be something important. And... Uh, he already ran out of chips for the Pro 1000. He's awaiting an order. He had already kind of um, predicted that this would happen. And he placed an order for more chips for the Pro 1000 refilling system. So things are going well. Let me give you a bit of a suggestion. When you navigate this website and you add things to the list and then you go to the cart. Before you can proceed, you have to choose the country that you are in. If you miss that, if you do not do that, it'll seem like you just cannot go forward at all. No matter what you do, you cannot proceed over to the payment section or the section where you would enter your address. You have to pick your country. And there are several countries listed, so pay attention to that. He has opened up some other countries as well. So pay attention to that. And, uh, yeah, it should be... Uh, very easy. Someone had a little bit of trouble uh, yesterday getting past that point, and I went ahead and tested it myself, and indeed, that's what it was. You must choose. For example, myself, I have to choose USA. It's not automatically assumed that it is going to be shipped to the USA, so you have to choose your country. All right, that is it. The question that was provided to me from a viewer had to do with paper profiles that are provided by third-party paper manufacturers. Now, these profiles are always created using OEM inks, original inks for their particular paper using a printer, for example, a Pro 1000 from Canon. So when you get this profile, you download it, you should, and I'm not going to say it's always 100%, but you should receive either a text file with it, a PDF, indicating the proper paper choice that you are to choose within the driver. You may think erroneously, I might add, that that paper choice controls color reproduction. No, it does not. The paper choice simply assigns parameters or physical parameters to the printer so it knows how wide a plate and gap to set, depending on the thickness, how much ink density it is to lay down, depending on the coating, and so on. Nothing to do. Also, wait a minute, I left one out. Matte or photo black ink. In other words, PK or MK. So, again, whether it's matte media or media with a luster, sheen, whatever you want to call it, you have to rely on that paper choice so that it can dictate to the printer what black ink to choose, how wide the plate and gap is to be set, and the surface so that it gets the correct ink density. Nothing to do with the color reproduction. If you're going to use a Canon, you must then tell it to not use color matching. The way you do that with most Canon Pro printers is 
color, manual adjustment, matching, and then set it to none. Then in your editing application, if it's an application that can handle ICC profile use, there is where you choose the ICC profile you downloaded from the particular paper manufacturer. If it's Canon, you should have your Canon profiles there as well and any other profile that you installed. On Windows, you just double click the profile or right click and hit install. On Mac, you have to physically copy it to a location that I really don't know what that is. You Mac users know what that is. I do not. All right, so that is it for that subject. Second question, kind of unrelated, but again, basically has to do with color management. He wanted to know the differences between rendering intents such as perceptual and relative colorimetric. Very basically, without getting into the color, long hair, whoa, I don't have any hair, aspects of rendering intense, perceptual takes every single color that's out of gamut and in gamut and just pushes it into that invisible gamut bubble. In other words, the bubble contains the colors that the printer can reproduce. So if there were colors already inside, it just tells them to move to the center so that it can make room for the outside colors to move in. On a landscape, that's okay. On something like that, it is not. Because you have skin tones, you have colors that have to be kept accurately as they were captured. So if you shift colors in order to make out of gamut colors be able to fit, then you are actually shifting those colors from what may have been the correct color to some other now incorrect color. When you have portraiture, when you have people, pictures with faces and skin tones, you cannot use perceptual. Perceptual is great for landscapes, ocean scenes, where if you do compress some colors, you would have to go back there to see if the capture of those colors is correct. And it really doesn't really matter at that point. But with skin tones, we know what skin tones look like. You cannot be shifting them. So for skin tone pictures or pictures that you cannot shift colors that are inside that gamut bubble, you use relative colorimetric. What it will do, it will take the few colors that are not in gamut, it will fit them in, but without shifting the already in gamut colors, okay? So relative will not shift in gamut colors. Perceptual will shift the whole kit and caboodle so that it can all fit in that little ballroom. Think of it as people. Some people are outside the doors. They need to be fitted. So in order for them to fit it, have you ever heard the word, Everybody move toward the center. That's what the colors are doing when you use perceptual, okay? When you use relative, no one is moving toward the center. They're staying where they are at, and you're just packing as many as you can from the outer gamut side, which is outside that room, into that room, which is the in gamut side. And that is it. That's how it works. You can visualize this when you soft proof. So please do that. Do that. It will give you a visual representation of what is going on. Also, black point compensation. If you have an image that has some tonal values that are close to black, close to pure black, and maybe a couple of steps above black, not using black point compensation will cause those colors to basically get crushed. They just crush themselves to pure black. If you click on black point compensation, it will actually take those last few steps and sort of expand them a little bit visually so that you can see a little bit more difference between some of those tonal values that would have ended up as just pure black. Okay, no discernion. Discernion. No, what's the word? You cannot discern between them. So by using black point composition, it will actually open up those shadow tones a little bit and you will be able to print them so that they look better, okay, on paper. You will still have your black but you will not have the last three, four tones crushed into one single black. So it's very important to uh, use it as well. Go ahead and also visualize that under soft proofing. It's all there. You can see basically what the printer is going to produce. And while you are soft proofing, you can then make you know, minor adjustments to the image, still viewing it under soft proofing situation. That way you know, well, this is what it's gonna look like printed. I want it to look a little bit more vibrant. So you could just increase the saturation a little bit more.
okay? Or increase the contrast a little bit more, or change whatever, the brightness, the whatever. Any adjustment you can do while soft proofing basically is what is going to appear to be like on print when it comes out of the printer. That is it. All righty. Thank you so much for everything. Remember, Saturday evening, 7 o'clock, Easter time, Eastern time, USA. We're going to talk about refilling. Lots of information about refilling, considering what has just recently taken place for the Pro 10, the Pro 1, the Pro 1000, and of course, Epson. So keep your questions related to refilling, and I'll be more than happy to attempt to answer them. I'm not saying I'm going to give you 100% the gospel truth, because I don't know everything, believe it or not. Yes, some people told me that. And I say, well, you know what? Yes, I agree with that. I do not know everything. I am learning from other folks, taking that information after I test it and prove it. I pass it on to you guys. So be there Saturday evening. We'll have a great time again, about an hour and 15 minutes. It's all it will take. Of course, consider Super Chat. Donate to Super Chat for the session. I will answer your questions first above anyone else's questions. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And as always, happy printing. Bye-bye.